Um, thanks, everyone, for coming today. I'm going to be talking about SQLized migrations, which I think will be new to everyone. But if you're going to continue using SQLized in your job, you're going to want to use migrations. So I hope this will be useful. Um, so imagine that you're a developer and you work at Todoaholic, and your product is a simple to-do app. You have a million users or so. One day, your product manager comes to you and decides that to-do lists should now have titles. You know from your experience with SQLize that if you use the db sync force true command, you will completely lose all of the data in your database. So you're thinking, oh, maybe I can save all the database and put it back in, but for a million users, if they have multiple lists, that's very hard on your server. So if only there's a way to change my database without destroying the data. Well, good thing that SQLize lets you use migrations, which are incremental, reversible changes to your database schema. Okay. Um, what does a migration look like? It is an object with an up and a down function. Inside of the up function is where you write the code, which will do the modifications you want to make to your schema. And in down, you'll write the code to reverse those changes. Whenever you run a migration, um, your package will run the up function. And if you want to undo any migration, it'll run the down function. Um, you write all of these modifications off of the query interface object. And some examples of these functions are create table, add column, and change column. And you can see that it looks a lot like um, the structures that you're used to writing inside of your SQLized model file. Okay. Um, to do migrations in SQLized, you'll be using the SQLized CLI package. It gives you all of these commands, which are in the SQLized um, website. Today, I'll t go over DB migrate, migration create, and model create. To do any of these commands, you will write this code known module slash dot bin slash equalize and then the command. Okay, so to get started with migrations, you install the normal dependencies for SQLize, which are SQLize PG and PGH store, and the SQLize CLI package. Then you have to configure um, SQLize CLI and tell it where your server path is, the migrations path, and the model path. Okay. Once you have your configuration file ready, you can initialize migrations with this line of code. That will create a migrations folder, a models folder, a roots folder, and this config.json file in your project. In the config.json is where you put in your database name, the dialect you're using, which is probably Postgres, and your username, which by default is also Postgres. Okay. So if you had started at your company using migrations, you could have used this really handy generator that the SQLize CLI package gives you. And just by writing this line of code, it makes your whole model file for you. So you don't have to go through all of this code anymore. Additionally, it makes this migration file, which will be a timestamp plus the name of the migration. And you can see it already populated the up and the down functions for you. The up function is this query function dot create table with all of the columns you want, and the down is the drop table. Okay. Um, likewise, if you have a user's model, you could have used the same generator to make your user, user's table. Um, so you might be thinking now, how can I associate the user model with the to-do model? And you might have noticed that when you use the model generator, it creates this empty associate method in your class method. Here you can type in any associations you want. So 
to associate users to your to-do list, you can just associate the function of model to-do belongs to model's user. You can also add any validations you want in the to-do model. But so far, nothing you have done has actually changed your database. In order to make changes, you have to run this command, which will run the migrate file that was generated. Okay, so now, after you've run this command, you have a to-do and a users table. Okay, um, now here is the whole benefit of using migrations. You want to make a change to your to-do table. So you're going to have to manually create a migration by using the migrate create and give it a name that's really easy to remember or that describes what you did. So add title to to-dos. It'll make this empty migration file, which you'll have to fill out. So if you want to add a to-do column or a title column to your to-do model, you just write add column, that's the name of the table, your column name and the data type. And make sure that you also write uh, the opposite of that command, which is remove column, in case you ever have to undo that migration. Okay. So now here's the database. Before there's two things, do the first thing and the second thing. You've run the migration and your data is still there and now you have a title column. But running DB migrate only changes your Postgres database. It doesn't know that it should change your model file. So if you had um, a post method in your database and you're trying to post new to-do lists with titles, it wouldn't actually be able to do it unless you write in your model file that there's a to-do column. So any migration that you make, you'll have to also write the code in your model. Okay, so now here is your new app. Your to-do lists have titles and your boss is very happy. Okay, so here's the resources I use. Um, there's not too much documentation I could find on migrations, but I did make like an actual repo showing how you use this with a to-do list, so you can have a look at it. And I hope it was very helpful, so thank you. <laughs> Any questions?